Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these metal lace and swirl earrings. Now, the design came from, hmm, originally, I've got a picture on uh, a tablet here. This is the original pair of earrings where this is designs being inspired. I made these earrings, I'm guessing about five years ago and they sold long, long, long time ago. And I don't have, um, these are black onyx hearts. This is a 10 millimeter and this is an eight millimeter. In, so I'm teaching you how to make it with round beads and it's the same dimensions. This is 10 millimeter and eight millimeter beads. But um, I just wanted you to see where the inspiration came from and the technique that you use on the round beads is gonna be pretty much identical to what you would do on the hearts. So if you happen to have those two sizes of matching hearts, you can make it with hearts as well as round. But it's pretty difficult to um, get the matching hearts. So I figured I'd teach it with round because it's much easier to find um, matching round. Okay, so for supplies, the supplies are pretty simple here. Um, we're gonna need a seven inch piece of 20 gauge. I've got the my stand a little higher today because of the iPad picture was too big for it close up. So I'll be adjusting it in a bit. But right now, I'm just uh, explaining what I'm doing here. So we need seven inches of 20 gauge dead soft wire. I'm using raw copper to make the two bottom dangles. And then you're gonna need two eight inch pieces of 20 gauge dead soft wire to make um, the top portion of the earring. And you're gonna need your ear wires of choice. You will need a ruler. You will need a round nose pliers. You will need your chain nose pliers and you will need your snips, your flush cutters. So all that will be in the description below and you can check it out. And my measurements will be there in metric as well as um, inches. So let's begin i'm just going to pause this to adjust my my camera okay so i'm back with the camera lowered and so it'll be easier for me to look into the camera now and i want you to take your seven inch piece of wire and i'm going to call this working wire because we're going to make both bottom drops out of this and i want you to take um your round nose pliers and, oh, sorry, chain nose pliers. A little bit distracted here from all the movement. These, um, we're making the bottom spiral, so a head pin. Basically, I'm just making the bud and then wrapping it around like this. So is it just me or is it normal that people that make jewelry get um, distracted really, really easily? Um, my husband seems to think so. He calls it um, shiny. Oh, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Okay. So that's the head base, the head pin. And if it's not quite centered, then you just adjust it like this. And with your nail, that's how I break my nails. Okay, and now you put your bead on. And I'm just gonna move that plier out of the way. There, I've got my eight millimeter bead on there. And one of these will be done in a normal 
loop on top and the other one will be the reverse so that we are mirroring mirroring um, the drop and I want it to have about three wraps so you, you try and make the distance where you can do three wraps and then your favorite size of actually no you want a little bit larger loop so I'm going three quarters up my shank of my pliers and the reason why you want that a little bit larger and you got to remember where you were for the next one but the reason why you want to do that is because it's going to be having two wires through it and you want it to um, have free movement so if it was too tight, it wouldn't have free movement, and it would kind of ruin everything. Okay, so I'm going to put that out of the way. And I'm going to make a loop on top. And I want it to cross over. And at this point, I'm going to stop and make my... You know, I... I can't. I have to finish this off because I need the working wire. So if you wanted to do it so they're side by side, do it alternating, you could have two pieces of wire. That's your choice because this is actually pretty simple. I think it would be rather easy to do duplicate. So I want the wire to hug the bead and follow the curve of the bead. We want it to have a nice flowing swirl. So I've got it crossed over from the loop on top and the loop needs to be centered. So if yours isn't centered, then you need to take a plier and squeeze it and move it over very carefully. And then have it swirl around gently and then behind. So it's kind of, so it's like that. So it's pretty. With the hearts, we're just, you know, following the curve of the hearts. And then at the bottom, we're at the back. This is at the back of the earring. And I'm wrapping around to the front. Like this. And then we're going to take our snips and snip it in there. With the flush part. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter because it's going to be butting up against another wire. It's not going to end up with a burr that we can feel. And then you need to take your chain nose pliers and my my wire rose up a little bit it doesn't always do that but if it does you just push it down like this push it down and then crimp it in and I barely had to crimp it in and that's done and that's what it looks like from the front it, that one turned out really really well Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one, and we're going to take the remainder of our wire, and I'm going to make another head pin out of it. So you got your bud. My bud's a little bit open. I'm going to turn it a little bit more and crimp it in again. There. And it's sliding on me, so it's not going very fast. And that's all we need. Okay, that's all we need. Now I'm going to put the bead on, and this time I'm going to do the reverse loop. Now I have a bit of a bend in there. I'm going to snip that off. The bead doesn't want to go on very well. Okay, so I am holding the spiral 
the same direction I did with the other earring if you want it reversed but you don't need to stress about it you can flip over the spiral anytime you want at the bottom that's easy to do and I'm gonna now get my measurement and I did about a third up my shank okay and I'm actually my loop is a third up my shank too and to reverse it I'm making the wire go on the right side instead of the left side like so and now I'm going to flip it around because I want this to remind me that this is the front and wrap three times okay and you've got to stop I maybe didn't mention that before you want you want to stop on the other one we stop going that way this one we're stopping going this way and now we want to make the loop the same size as our other one and I'm a little bit bigger not much so once I get it over here it's going to be pretty much the same size I'd say that's pretty accurate so if that takes you a little bit a couple of tries to get that you know it's not that time consuming it's worth the effort so now I'm going to hug now we want to match the positioning so I'm quite on the top so I want this one to be on the top and then work its way down curving around the bead and then around the back so it's kind of like that and then I'm flipping it over and see I don't have much left over so if you feel uncomfortable with only having that little bit left over um, instead of seven inches make all three pieces of your wire eight inches because then, then you've got an extra inch um, leeway Okay, now I'm going to snip that off. Whoops, got to get the plier. No, I did have it the right way. There we go. And I'm thinking I want to move this camera a little bit lower. I think I adjusted it. Don't want to get you dizzy, but I adjusted it for that uh, tablet. That picture was rather large. Okay, so I'm crimping that in. And there. That one's done. And you compare, and they look pretty good now this one may be a little bit more forward so I can with my thumbnail which keeps wanting to bend because they're not very strong um, you can push it down a little bit and then it's closer but you got to be careful and gentle when you're pushing it down because you don't want to put a kink in the wire Okay, so I'm setting those aside now. And next you're gonna take one of your um, eight inch pieces of, of 20 gauge wire. And you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna measure three inches from the end and give it a bend right there. Okay, and then you're going to take your round nose pliers and you're going to make a loop, 
a normal size loop. It doesn't have to be as big as the last one. So a normal size loop. And just so you know, this part is the short end. We're making the loop with the long end of the wire. And we're going to make the normal loop with this one. We'll be reversing the other one. And we want three wraps. So one, two, three. And I'm just going to cinch it up a little bit more. And you want the wire going down straight. And I'm going to straighten out my wrap because my wrap isn't very neat. And I do that by gently pushing around. And there, that looks much neater. Now I'm going to put, um, no, why don't we at this point make the other one with the reverse. We're doing exactly the same thing as we're taking our wire, measuring three inches, giving it a bend, and now we're doing the reverse loop with three wraps. Normal size loop, same as the other one. So we're going to have the wire at the back. I mean the right hand side, sorry. And you want to make sure that's a nice round loop. Because oh, the backwards one, I always have a hard time getting it round. I'm not sure why. One wrap, two wraps. catching on my pliers and three wraps and now I'm going to do all the straightening out just needed cinching it's pretty straight straighten that out and there that one's that one's ready to go okay so I've got both of them See, one's facing this way, one's facing that way. And that's what they look, both look like from the front. It's blurry. Not sure why. There we go. Okay, now we might as well, before we put the bead on, let's put the top loop on just like we did with the other one. So this time... the wire is going differently we're going we're crossing on top here I got to get that out of the way we're crossing on top just like the other time but it's to the side just a smidge and we're gonna make the wire curvy in the front so it's a little bit different than what we did at the bottom so it's in the front okay so going to make that loop and we this wires on this side so we want the loop just a smidge on that side not extremely okay like that and you don't want this wire going high like we did it with the other one this one we want it to be down like this because we want it to kind of go on the front of the bead okay so I'm going to do the same thing with the other wires so now I've got to compare the size of the loops Okay, this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to tighten it up. Whichever one's bigger, tighten that one up. It's easier to tighten than to loosen. Compare. Uh, 
is the smidge tighter. Okay, that should be good. There we go. And the angle looks very similar. Uh, I see that this loop is a little bit bent over. We'll fix that later. We won't worry about it right now. But why not? Then you, if you notice it, fix it. And then you don't have to. It's probably going to bend again later. But we'll see. Okay, so now you pick one of them that you're going to work on first. Let's do this one. I've got the one with the wire facing to the left. That's the normal loop. Okay. Now also, you notice how I'm um, making it swirl a little bit. So we're going this way and then that way a little bit again. So it's kind of got a smidge of an S shape to it. Mind you, that's the opposite one. Here's, there we go. So that one's a reverse S. So I'm gonna use the shape of the bead to help a little bit. I'm pushing this a little bit more over and then coming, I hope I wasn't out of frame there. I didn't look at my camera enough because I was trying to pay attention to detail. Okay, so that looks really nice. Might take practice. So the next thing I'm gonna do is loop around. We're not snipping off the wire though. We're looping around a complete loop around that wire. So just like we did when the spir spiral was here, but we're not snipping it off. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna work on the net other one. So I've got this, I'm gonna put the bead on. And you might find that this wire pushes on the bead. You just have to pull it forward, maybe a smidge to accommodate. Okay, so it's already got a nice curve there, and now I want it to have a reverse curve, a complementary curve. See how I got the curve there? If you don't have enough, you can tease it with your fingernail and by pushing like this, and there. Looping around. There, and now it matches the other one in reverse, okay? So the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to make sure that this loop is hugging and pushing up the bead as best it can, because we want it tied up. It might move on you while you're doing your next steps, if it does, we will push it up again because we want both earrings to be the same size. So whichever way your wire was going, we're going to push the wire that was going straight down in the same direction. So let's do that with both of them. So this is being moved up like that. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to do is we're going to do... Um, on the one where the wires are facing right, we're going to do a clockwise tiny little swirl at the bottom. So, there, this isn't, this one usually isn't very neat because of the way it wrapped around and kind of coming from different angles. That's why we want it to be fairly small. And you gotta make it level. So we're gonna be moving around and it's gonna wobble on you. And if it separates here, like you see it did, that's where you take, sorry I bumped the phone, that's where you take your chain nose pliers and push it up again to lock that bead in place. So I'm putting pressure on it, pushing it back up. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other bead. But it's a counterclockwise loop. Okay, and it's kind of messy looking there. And I've scored facing. See how I did that? The loop is that way, the front is that way. You're going to fix that. You're going to grab it, and if it, it's going to be covered. If it mars, it's okay. But you want it to be facing forward. And then you can compare the size. This one's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try and make it tighter. And make it forward. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Now we're going to take this and we're going to make a secondary loop. And we want it to be just a smidge bigger than this loop. But we will want, I'm just going to push these two wires together. They're splitting apart. We want both of them to have the same size of loop. Okay, so I've got... I had to move this downwards because it was up and we want the loop to look nice and round and pretty. But we want enough space in there that we can put, we can hang that other bead from and we want these wires not to cross over they're splitting apart on me not sure why it's doing that so I'm just pushing it maybe that maybe I flipped them over and I shouldn't have that's what happened so if they're splitting apart the wrong way push the other wire on top if you have a split like this, that just gives more character. It's better to be there than on this side, because this side will affect the structure of your ear wire, earring. Okay, so I've got that. Now I want to make sure that they're facing forward. It's not quite, so I've got this loop and this loop have to be facing the same direction. So I had to flip this over just a smidge. It's a little bit picky work but it's worth it they're very pretty earrings okay and now i'm going to try and do the same thing in reverse on the other one and that can be a challenge but it's doable this one ended up being easier Probably because of being right-handed and left-handed. Okay, now I'm going to compare. And we're not going to get exact because wire has a mind of its own. Um, but you want it fairly close. Okay, let's compare now. Okay, so it's a splitting apart here. So I'm wondering if I have the wrong wire on top. So I just switched them out. Making the face forward. Okay, that will do. Now I'm going to put the drops on. So, in order for them to sit right, I forgot, this loop has to be this direction. So we need to adjust that. So we need 
to make this perpendicular to the other loop. Which can be a challenge, so I'm moving this one a little bit forward. And if it won't turn one way, turn it the other way. That one worked. Now you see how it's sitting to the left? Now I'm going to try and center that. Because we want it to hang right. And we will check the hanging at the end too. That, that's part of what we need to do. Okay, so that's how that one is. It's sitting right in the middle. That's good. That's what we want. Okay, so now we need to make sure we have the right drop. So what we need is this one's going this way. We want the bottom one going the other way. So this is the wrong drop, but I have this drop ready. So I'm going to grab the other one and see how it's reversed top to bottom. That gives it lit, what I'm calling the metal lace effect. Sorry for bumping the phone. My stand is bouncy, but I can, uh, it's working well for me. So you don't want it on the right way like this. You want it on backwards right here because it's going to flip around as you do the corner. And see, there it is. It's facing the right way. Okay, so adjusting the direction of everything will be done later. Right now, um, the next step on this one would be to snip off these wires. But I want to put my other uh, eardrop on my other earring first. So I've got it like this. I've got this. Oh, I first need to adjust that loop getting ahead of myself so it's perpendicular and then we need to get everything out of the way there so, I got, so it's a tiny bit to the right I'm just going to move it a smidge And now I have it centered. So now I've got my other earring. Put it backwards. And there. It's sitting the right way. Hi, I'm back with part B, but I'm pretty confident I'll be able to link these two together. So this is going to be one video. But I'm um, continuing on with these ear earrings. So you need to take your ruler at this point and um, measure from the center point where you can see where the hole, hole was. I, I would, don't want it to be so blurry. Okay, so envision where the hole, the center of the bead is. We're going to measure one centimeter and we're going to snip off one centimeter. But my safety rule is to snip off larger uh, at first because I find the ruler moves on you and I'd rather have it to be too big at first and then we can do a minor adjustment later. So grab your snips. I've got it underneath my ruler, but like I said, the ruler tends to slide. So I'm gonna snip it here. Okay, so I'm at about 14 millimeters. So I need to snip off about four, but I'm not gonna do quite four. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. Okay, and now I'm at 11 millimeters, so I'm going to snip off just a smidge more. 
and it should be exact now from the center of the bead. Yep, it's exact. Now I want to do that same process with the other earring. Remeasure. Yeah, I'm around 14 millimeters again. I'm just going to snip off about two or three millimeters. And yeah, I'm a little bit, has a little bit more than one millimeter there. Remeasure. It's just a hair more. Not that it, that little bit would really matter. Okay. So we got have that done. So now what we're going to do is put a tiny loop going up. And we want to just arch the wire a tiny bit. And the same thing for the bottom one. So to make it easier, just spread the two apart. Not too much, just a little bit. And you can take the tip of your round nose pliers if you have it small enough. Or the tip of your chain nose pliers if you have them small enough. So whichever plier is small and you're comfortable using... That's what you should use. And you just want the wire to make a small loop and to touch itself like that. So that way there's no end to catch on anything. And then do the same. And it has the slightest bend there, but we can adjust that later if we have to. I'm going to do the same thing. I flip the earring backwards to do the bottom loop on this one. And you see how they're together too much? I want to give it more bend. Just a little bit. Just so it gives that type of look. Okay, so that one's done. And now, you want to try and get the same look on this one. So we're going to start by spreading them apart a little bit. I'm holding it upside down because this is the proper loop one. So it's facing to the left. Holding it upside down to do the bottom one first this time. I mean, not that you have to do it in the same order I'm doing it in. Whatever you're comfortable with. And now turning it right side up and to the back. Okay, so this one spread apart on its own really nicely. That's the look we want. Now I'm going to compare the two. That one's upside down. There we go. And they have a very similar look to them. I'm going to give more of a curve to the upper one here. I mean, just eyeball it and see what you think needs to be done. You don't want to do it too drastically either. Okay. So now this one has a little bit more. So I'm just going to push it. Let's see if that worked. Okay, I'm going to lift this one up a little bit more. And 
that's finicky work and you just do it till you feel good about it and you know when it's not you're never going to get it exact anyways because it's handmade but the best you can and there those are done ready for their ear wires Okay, so after you have the ear wires done, then you need to do your checks to make sure that they hang right. And it's really hard for me to show you because the camera is, you know, at an angle like this. So gravity is against us. But you're gonna you're gonna have it dangle and make sure that it's sitting all forward. This one is, so I don't need to adjust. But if it was the top one was sitting off, you would start with the top one and then you'd, you'd adjust the top loop until it sat right. And then you look at the bottom one and see if it needs adjusting. And if it does, then you adjust this loop, either left or right, whichever you need to make it all facing forward. Now I'm gonna check the other earring and see how it sits. And I notice my ear wire's a little bit off. I'm gonna fix my ear wire. Can't judge it unless your ear wire's straight. Okay, so I think I think it needs to be facing that way a little bit. Just just a smidge. So I'm gonna So what you do is you hold the the loop still and you just because it's hard to figure out which way to push the loop. So it's better just to hold the loop still and move the earring the direction you need. Because then you'll move it the right way. And now it's sitting correctly and the bottom the bottom one is sitting perfect as well so I was lucky and it didn't need much adjusting yours might need more it's gonna take practice to get that um, where you you know what you're doing as you're assembling it but you know what don't give up and do plan to do a few pairs before um, you are too critical with yourself because this this is not I wouldn't say this is a beginner project but I will not discourage beginners to make this because every time you challenge yourself to something that's a little bit harder you're gonna grow and you're gonna learn so enough enough lecturing for now uh, I thank you for joining me in this video God bless you um, see you in the next one. Bye for now.